All right, welcome back. Uh, it's the last video for module five. So we finish on synapses. So up to this point, uh, you should be feeling pretty confident with how impulses are initiated and how action potentials um, are moving down the axon to the axon terminal. So a quick summary, because um, it's going to help you just understand how the this topic of synapses works as well. Um, so as before, in order for the the impulse to go down, it's it's a constant um, wave of depolarizations. So the as those sodium ions have has diffused in through this voltage gated sodium ion, ion channel, they are going to cause the voltage to become less negative. And if we get to the threshold of minus fifty five, that's going to cause this voltage gated channel to open, and same thing's going to happen here and eventually we get to this end channel which is this is what we haven't seen yet but this is a a calcium ion channel and again it's voltage gated so if we get to the threshold of minus 55 then calcium ions are going to diffuse in and what calcium ions do they they will cause these vesicles here to start to move so it's just starting to move now and it will start to move towards the end of the axon terminal. So we think of this first neuron, we call it the presynaptic neuron. It's the neuron um, before the synapse. So it's going to fuse with the membrane at the end of the axon terminal. So that's it fuse with it. And I'll quickly draw the um, the neurotransmitters so they're now leaving via exocytosis and they're going to diffuse across they're going to diffuse across the synaptic cleft so this is the synaptic cleft or we call it the synapse and it's a very very small gap it's between 20 to 30 nanometers so the impulse cannot jump across the impulse comes to the end so this wave of action potentials or depolarizations gets to the very end and in order for the information to move from the presynaptic neuron to the postsynaptic neuron we need these chemicals here called neurotransmitters so they're going to diffuse across and they're going to bind on to receptors at the other on, on the membrane of the postsynaptic neuron. And these receptors are associated with sodium ion channels. So those sodium ion channels, they're not voltage gated. They are, they only open if the neurotransmitter binds on. So when it opens now, sodium ions can pour in, they can diffuse in or depolarization. And that is going to cause if there's enough sodium entering, we're going to get to our threshold of minus 55 again. And that's going to cause this one to open. This one will be voltage gated now. And the impulse will carry on now to, to the bottom. And this is, goes on from one neuron to, to the next. So the context of uh, when you're learning the synapses, you have to um, talk about a very specific synapse called the cholinergic synapse and the cholinergic synapse is a synapse where the neurotransmitters we're talking about are called acetylcholine so the neurotransmitters that in here we can think of these triangle little triangle things as neurotransmitters called acetylcholine and they're going to acetylcholine diffuses across it binds onto the receptor that's associated with the sodium ion channel and the sodium channel opens sodium enters so what happens next then we have an enzyme called acetylcholinesterase and it's going to cause the breakdown of acetylcholine so this is breaking down now uh, into choline and ethanoic acid so there's our choline and ethanoic acid and they're going to diffuse across to their previous presynaptic neuron and they're going to be 
repackaged. They're going to be brought back to the original uh, vesicle. And if you put the ethanoic acid and choline together, well, it's going to make up acetylcholine again. So they can be recycled as, uh, and that can go on. Okay. So um, acetylcholine is, is, is considered to be um, an excitatory neurotransmitter. So that's a neurotransmitter which causes um, sodium ion channels to open and therefore allowing positive charge to go in. So if the positive ions can come in, it means the the voltage is going to become less negative to minus 55 and therefore you'll get your next impulse happening. But you can also get inhibitory neurotransmitters and these would be, so if I had to draw another channel, but this channel here is a chloride ion channel. It only opens um, with a different type of neurotransmitters. Let's just get a different color. Um, whatever that color that will do. So if an inhibitory neurotransmitter were to, were to bind on here, and it wouldn't be able to bind on to, to the sodium channels because it's the wrong shape. Let's make it square to make that a bit more obvious. So it's a different shape. So it cannot bind on to the, to the sodium ones. It only binds on to the, the receptor associated with the, the chloride ions. Well, if that neurotransmitter is released and the chloride ion channel opens, well, that's going to bring chloride ions in, which is negative. And that's going to prevent the, the, um, the post synaptic neuron from being able to get to this minus 55 millivolts because it's going to keep the inside really negative. It's going to keep it to that minus 70, or it might even make it minus 75, whatever millivolts. So chloride ions, if ever they enter, they are stopping or they are inhibiting an impulse from going into to another neuron. So the neurotransmitter you need to be aware of is one called GABA. Okay. So, um, let's talk a bit about the role of synapses. So if you notice, whenever you get to the end of the axon terminal of a neuron, what you'll find is you have vesicles and you've got calcium ion channels. So that's what you'll find at the axon terminals. Whereas if you go to the, the dendrites of a postsynaptic neuron, you won't find these features, but what you will find is the receptors for the actual um, neurotransmitters. Um, you'll find the channels for the receptors for the neurotransmitters to be able to bind onto. So because of that, it means that even if this neurotransmitter here was to break off and diffuse back, there is no receptors here for it to bind onto and cause an impulse to go the wrong way. So it's, it's the, these synapses ensure that, that the impulse is only going in one direction or uni, unidirectional, we'd say. Okay, so another feature they've got is you can, an impulse, because don't just think of one neuron attaching to, uh, sorry, one, uh, yeah, one neuron attaching to another neuron. You can have one neuron attaching to hundreds of others at, at the same time. So if I had to like do a little sketch of that, this was a little neuron. It could be making connections with lots of neurons. And remember, it doesn't have just one little axon terminal. Those axon terminals branch off into smaller, smaller parts. And just like the, the dendrites, there's lots of little branches of dendrites. So this neuron now has the ability to go to many it, it can excite many different pathways at the same time. So imagine if an impulse is coming along down here, that could now cause an impulse to go this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. So that means, you know, and if you think about it, sometimes some stimuli cause many different responses at the same time. You know, it's not as simple as, you know, you might've learned about putting your finger into a flame and then you're, your bicep, the, the, the only response is that your bicep contracts and you move your arm away. Sometimes some uh, stimuli will cause you to move away. 
to change your breathing patterns, uh, to make your legs contract whilst your arms contract, your back muscles might move away. Um, lots of different responses can happen because lots of different uh, pathways are being fired at the same time. All right. Um, and stimuli from different receptors interacting to produce one single response. So that's the opposite now. It could be that you've got many neurons. I'm drawing really badly here. Different neurons. And they all join up with one neuron. So they might all be firing from different directions. And them all coming together might cause one response. So they're all releasing their neurotransmitters. And then you might get one simple pathway being fired at once. So this, now we're talking about um, two different types of summation. So we've got this um, spatial summation. Um, so this one here, I've just drawn here, this is spatial summation where you've got many different neurons, um, which are being, they've got their own impulses firing at the same time. So what you have to appreciate is some, just because a neurotransmitter diffuses across and it causes the channels to open, just that one little amount of neurotransmitter open the channel, that neurotransmitter is going to get broken up very quickly by enzymes and that will close again. So it's not always enough for that one little bit of sodium to enter. It requires, this This will happen to happen either quite often from the same neuron or you can have different neurons all contributing the, all of their neurotransmitters to one neuron at the same time. And if all of these neurotransmitters here now build up and they're all constantly bind onto receptors, there may eventually be enough sodium ions entering that we get to that minus 55. And now this can fire. All right, so that'd be spatial summation. Another way um, I've just been aware of how the postsynaptic neuron can get fired is something called temporal summation. So if this will just be looking at two neurons, so there's one neuron there, and there's another. Like I said before, one impulse firing, which causes the calcium channel to open, then you know, a little bit of neurotransmitters diffuse out, diffuse across to the channel, to the receptors here. That happening once isn't gonna reach thresholds. So the only way that you're gonna be able to, um, especially if there's no other connections, the only way this is gonna be able to cause this post synaptic neuron to, to fire to have its own action potential is for another impulse to come, another impulse to come, and another one, another one, another one. And the, the bigger the stimulus is, the higher the frequency of impulses are. So as more and more impulses come, that means you're gonna have a higher rate of neurotransmitters being released, and that's gonna increase your chances of enough sodium to enter. And again, hit, hit that minus 55, and eventually then the impulse can carry on down here. All right, so loads of um, keywords to go through here. All of these are stuff you need to be aware of, all these keywords. Remembering that the synapse we need to specifically know about is the, the cholinergic synapse. So take your time with this one. Maybe watch it over again and, yeah, speak to you soon.